Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Happy Thursday. I hope everybody is ready for an absolutely amazing day. I'm super excited because we have not one, not two, not three, but four amazing kiddos leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And just like this pizza, they are absolutely incredible. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Take it away. Go. Hi, my name is Amelia and I'm in Miss Tongue's third grade class. Hello, I'm Mia and I'm in Miss Hissa's second grade class. Hi, I'm Troy and I'm in Miss Hensel's fourth grade class. So today, I want to share with you the story of an amazing, very brave, and very confident little girl by the name of Ruby Bridges. Now, Ruby Bridges is a very important person because she was the first African-American girl to integrate into an all-white school. See, several years ago, blacks and whites couldn't be in the same schools. They were what we call segregated. And Ruby Bridges, a very bright little girl, and she had the opportunity to attend the all-white school that was closer to her home. And she had to be very courageous. She had to be very brave because she received a lot of angry people who weren't really happy about this. But she stuck to it. And because of her, our schools now are integrated. And so she led the way, and she's such an incredible pioneer. And as we celebrate Black History Month, it's really important to honor those people who have done amazing things for our country. So here is Ruby Bridges. We're naming the school library. It's now called the Ruby Bridges Library. Ruby Bridges was the first African American to go to an all-white elementary school in Louisiana. Up until then, whites and people of other races were not allowed to go to the same school. What is segregation? Segregation is the separation of people based on their race, culture, religion, or other reason. Over 70 years ago, there were segregated movie theaters, bathrooms, and even water fountains. African Americans were not allowed to eat at the same restaurants as white people. And people of different races were turned away or mistreated just because of the color of their skin. Schools for African American students were usually overcrowded and poor. There wasn't even enough money for books. Most all-white schools didn't have these problems. Racism is the unfair treatment of a group of people or individuals because of their race. You're right, Moby. It was a very sad and painful time. Can you imagine not being in school with people from different backgrounds? Finally, in 1954, the Supreme Court ruled to end segregation in schools. Schools had to integrate, which meant kids of different races could go to the same schools. Who is Ruby Bridges? Ruby Bridges was born on September 8, 1954, in Tylertown, Mississippi. She and her family moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, when she was four. Many schools in the South didn't allow black students to enroll, 
even though it was against the law. Ruby was going to an all-black school, but since schools had to integrate, she could go to the all-white school that was better and closer to home. Black students had to take a test to see if they could go to a school for whites. The test was set up to be difficult. School leaders wanted the test to show that black students failed and weren't ready for white schools. But Ruby did well on the test. So she entered first grade at William France Elementary School, which had only been for white students. She became the first African American student to integrate the school. What happened when Ruby Bridges went to school? Many students, parents, and teachers did not want schools to integrate. They protested angrily and even threw things. But many people encouraged Ruby. U.S. Marshals and supportive community members walked with Ruby and her mother to keep them safe. Ruby was brave. Even though it was scary, she stayed calm and didn't get upset. Teachers left, and parents took their kids out of school just because of Ruby. The whole school was nearly empty for months. One teacher, Mrs. Henry, was happy to teach Ruby. They stuck together, even though many people were against them. Ruby's father. Lost his job, and her grandparents were forced off their farmland, all because they were standing up for their rights. But Ruby and her family didn't give up. Ruby ignored the protests and kept going to school. Neighbors and community members helped the Bridges family and protected them from angry protesters. Many people believed in Ruby, including Eleanor Roosevelt, who was once the first lady of the United States. Roosevelt wrote a letter of support and encouraged Ruby. Eventually, students and teachers returned to school, and more African American students enrolled. Ruby Bridges stood up for her rights and encouraged Black students all over the country to do the same. An activist is a person who works to solve problems and address unfair treatment in communities. Today, Ruby Bridges is an activist who teaches about equal rights and encourages people to respect differences. Right, Moby. She's a great role model for all of us. That's why we named the library in her honor. You want something named after you? Like what?